How's everybody today? This is a really great crowd. I was just back there with Ralph Reed, and he said, you're going to love this crowd. And I could already tell when I came into the hotel last night, the, the beautiful uh, human beings who came up to me and, and hugs and, and saying, thank you, thank you for being in the fight. And I always respond, no, thank you for being in the fight. The fact that we're all here together means that we care so much for our country and, and really for our future generations. So I'm thrilled to be here. Not exactly thrilled to be in Washington, D.C. again, but hey, what's happening in this room is so powerful because we have the power of God in this room. When the people possess the power of God, anything is possible. And, and I kind of feel like, not kind of, I know that's what went wrong with Washington. They shoved God out. When they shoved God out, evil crept in. And that's why what is happening in Washington right now on many levels is downright evil. And we need some good, God-fearing people to turn this around. Who's in it? Who's ready? So I, I could sit up here and talk about the corruption in D.C. And, and we, you know, I only have eight minutes left. It would take all of that time and then probably two or three more days. So I want to talk about how we turn this around. I want to talk about the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit in this room and how we can turn this around. Are you with me on that, that you're willing to work hard? Because they created a mess, the political elite, and they're forcing us to live in this mess. They sold out the jobs to China, and that really helped to decimate the family. When dad loses a job, things get pretty rough in the family. And that was the beginning, decades ago, of decimating the family, decimating our economy, and selling out our families, frankly. But what I think we learned when a brash, bold New Yorker came on the scene was that uh, there's a lot more corruption than we thought. I think you all know who I'm talking about. How many of you missed that bull in a china shop? I missed the mean tweets and all. I'll tell you what, we need a bull in a china shop because I kind of feel like the White House has become a china shop. That's right. It's owned by China, and our president is sitting there taking bribes by China. That's not the kind of guy we want representing us. And so I'm looking forward to the next one year and four months to try to turn this around and make sure we get that brash New Yorker back in the White House to help clean things up. It's funny, I, I, uh, I heard that, that there was actually a Republican here criticizing Donald Trump yesterday. My, um, my, my team sent me a video of Chris Christie criticizing President Trump like he's the problem. Actually, I think he's the answer to turning things around. He's the answer. You cannot blame President Trump. There's no way. Who you can blame are these people who become part of the swamp, the uniparty. And I hate to say it, but there's some people with R's behind their name who are just as guilty as the left for what they've done. They've sat, they've done nothing, they didn't work for we the people, they worked to line their pockets. We need people in Washington who can't be bought, who can't be bribed, who can't be sold. We need real people. We need the Ronald Reagans of the world. We need the President Trumps of the world. We need the mama bears, the papa bears, and the citizen politicians. So let's all step forward and help turn this around. You know, I left my job in the news media because I just couldn't take it anymore. I realized it had become propaganda. And I stepped away from a very you know, wonderful career, 30 years in broadcast journalism as one of the fair ones, but I couldn't stand giving half-truths anymore to the people. And I stepped away from a very big paycheck, uh, a you know, seven-figure contract. My husband supported me in doing that. And I prayed to God, please make sure I don't regret this. And he gave me a sign. I opened up the Bible right as I was praying that. I just put my finger down and I landed on 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 7. You bring nothing into this world and you take nothing out. And that was the sign I needed. I knew I was making the right decision. And I tell you that because I really thought that my whole life was kind of collapsing and closing down and that I would just kind of fall back into the, back, the background. And I was okay with that because I didn't want to do a job that was immoral. But what God had planned for me was so much bigger than anything I could have planned that he put me into this wild political world at a time when we need fighters, at a time when we need honest people, and gave me a whole new, I closed one book and he opened up a whole new book and this one is much more exciting. 
Even though it's scary out there, even though we're in dark times, it is interesting to know that God put each one of us here. Now, not, maybe not all of you will run for office. There might be some mama bears out there that say, I don't have time to run for office. I'm raising my kiddos. But we can do something. God gave us, every one of us, skills, unique skills that are unique to each of us. And right now is the time to tap into those skills and take advantage of God placing us here at this critical moment. How many of you think this is a critical moment in American history? All right. How many of you think this is a critical moment in human history? And that God, that God placed us here for this moment is something that is so phenomenal. So when you're getting down and you say this hill is, is too, too tough, it's too big, I can't climb it, I don't have the energy, I don't have the power, just remember God thinks so highly of you that he placed you here at this time in history. And that means we can all do something. It might not be... It might not be you're running for office. Maybe you just step up as a mom and you say, I'm going to the uh, school board meetings and I'm going to get loud. Maybe you use your voice on social media and risk being canceled. We can all do something. How many of you have heard the, the phrase, and I think it was um, Reverend Billy Graham, courage is contagious. It truly is. I know that when, when Donald Trump came down the escalator, the courage he showed that day and in the days that came and in the years that came really made me want to do something courageous. And so when I stepped away from my career and then somehow stepped into the arena of politics, I tapped into somebody else's courage. And I had a lot of people reach out to me and say, you just showed an act of courage and now I feel like I can do something courageous. It just takes one little step through that fear. I recently uh, wrote a book, and it's, it's coming out right now. As a matter of fact, we're doing a book signing today. And the book is called Unafraid. And I titled it Unafraid because when you step through fear, the fear of being ostracized for having the wrong opinion, which is truly the right opinion these days, when you step through that fear, it's amazing. When you get to the other side, nothing can phase you. Nothing can make you afraid. And so I'm encouraging everybody today to find that thing that makes you afraid, whether it's speaking out, whether it is getting involved politically, whether it's ruffling some feathers, I encourage you to do that and step through that fear so that you too can be unafraid. I was at a book signing the other day and a mom came up to me and she was just, she had so much energy, you could just feel it oozing out of her. And I said, I just, I love your spirit, what do you do? And she said, oh, I'm just a mom. And I said, wait a minute, just a mom? You are the most powerful force on the planet? You are the most powerful force on the planet? It is the mama bears that are going to, I think, save this world. It's the mama bears. The most dangerous place in all of nature is between a mother bear and her baby cubs. And the radical left have found themselves right there. And a lot of mama bears are just ready to tear them to shreds. So... I want to ask you, stand up if you've done something courageous like speaking out at a meeting, getting involved politically. Stand up. Just if you've done something in the past, say, month. That's courageous. Oh, boy. This is, usually I get about five people, but okay. Now, when somebody else sees that act, they stand up. When somebody sees that a mom got loud at a school board meeting protecting her children, they stand up and they want to do something. This is how we take back our country. The government should not be trying to make us afraid of them. The government should be afraid of us. We the people, that government belongs to we the people, and it's flipped around right now, but I know that with God, and we possess God inside each and every one of us, with God on our side, nothing can stop us from taking back this government, taking back this country, and having its best and brightest days ahead. I thank you so much for being here today. I look forward to meeting you after this, and thank you, Ralph, for putting this together. We need God, and we need each and every one of you to step forward and be strong right now. Thank you. Appreciate it.